Bad Pack Broadcasting continues to bring you the best original sports content, but now you can get more of the content you love. For as little as $3 a month, you can get access to bonus content, including behind the scenes footage and interviews from the Sports Walk, Sideline Stories, or the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. All this exclusive content comes via Patreon. There are tiered levels of patronage, and each Backpack Broadcasting patron receives exclusive perks. Your support helps Backpack Broadcasting create more of the original content that you love. Visit Backpack Broadcasting's Patreon page and become a patron today. Hard to Tell Podcast, episode 122, Brian Fonseca, along with myself, Dexter Henry. You never say my name first. That's crazy. I did. I usually say Dexter <laughs> Henry, Brian Fonseca. I gave you some love this time, man. I yeah, some love yeah. This time. I mean, yo, 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 we out in the... <laughs> What what International New York Film Festival, you know? We gotta yeah, put some respect yeah. on Side Hustle now. You know what I'm saying? We gotta I do that you. now. I hear you. And we have we have, we have a guest joining with us because we have something really important to talk about. We have Dakota Smith. Uh he's the lead writer and social media guy for Ridiculous Upside, SB Nation blog. They cover everything on the G League. My man Dakota calls himself the G League King. I like I that. I don't call myself the You G don't that? You don't call yourself that? Okay. Here's the thing. Um, I think personally, personally, I think people that give themselves nicknames are yeah. kind of jackasses. <laughs> I agree. But if, 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 if <laughs> okay. people give you a nickname, I feel like it's fair to use it for yourself. I, you know what? I agree with that. I think that is good nickname etiquette. I totally yes. rock with that. So then, I guess the question becomes, Dakota, how did you get the nickname G Lee King? Well, I've been um, doing this uh, since I graduated high school in 2012. So I've been I've been doing this for years. I'm turning 26 on Saturday. Mm. Happy birthday! So, I'm the day, I'm the day right after you. So the 19th. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, I've been doing this uh, for a long time, and I feel like I've built a reputation of somebody that knows probably knows more about the G League than anybody that's not on like a G League team. The G League King. G League King <laughs> and uh, my. Uh, my friend, she uh, she writes about the uh, Raptors on a five, Kelsey yep. O'Brien. She gave me I think that nickname, respect her a lot. So I thought, you know, I'll use it for myself. All right, that's that, that's fine. That's fine, man. I, I respect the name. I do agree with you. People who give themselves nicknames, they're kind of assholes. I definitely, yeah. I definitely <laughs> ag- ag- agree with that. All right, so Dakota, reason we got you here to talk. Obviously, some big news involving the the G League, and that surrounds Jalen Green's decision to forego uh, going to college and playing in the NBA G League. When you first saw this news break, uh, what were your thoughts on this? Man, I was shocked. I was shocked because there have been, like, remember um, it's two years ago at this point where Darius Baisley initially said that he was going to be joining the G League, then he backed out uh, to take an internship uh, with New Balance, and, you know, he spent that uh, time practicing, and, you know, it looked like, you know, after his first year, it looks like that's going to be paying off for him. Seas look good with the OKC Thunder. So at that point, uh, that plus RJ Hampton and Lamel Ball deciding to go to Australia, um, go to the other side of the world when the you know G League was an option. Uh, for you know they had the professional path program, one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. I thought maybe it's not going to be in the cards for the G League. So. With all that, you know, back, background, I was I was surprised. I was surprised. Like Evan Daniels, like major high school writer, said that the G League was a serious option. And you know, while I respect his supporting, I didn't believe it because of everything that has happened in the background and you know the my history with the G League and it basically being you know a mom and pop shop and now you know it's becoming a big thing. So. I was surprised, and you know, on the day that Jalen Green made his the announcement, it you know took a while for me to gather my thoughts mm-hmm. on you know that and you know everything else that uh, transpired. No, what could you tell us about 
maybe the level of competition that Jalen Green is going to see, because obviously, you know, you're up on the G League and you know what's going on and you really study these guys, like you really study these guys. So what could you tell us about the competition that he's going to see and Isaiah Todd as well? Because remember, like this, I know people think the G League is some minor league sort of system, but it's much more than that. These are also some of the best players in the world. So, you know, on that, uh, what, what could you say about what he's going to face? Well, the thing is, uh, uh, Jalen Green, Isaiah Todd, they're going to be um, kind of outside of the current like 2018 G League infrastructure. Right. So they're going to be, um, I think ESPN said they're going to be uh, playing around 10 to 12 games against G League uh, competition. Chris Sain said it's going to be a 20, 25 game schedule in particular. So uh, they're not going to be dealing with the grind of a you know fifty game G League schedule of you know going to Sioux Falls, Oshkosh, you yeah, know, um, wonderful Oshkosh, places. All that. <laughs> yeah, but, um, in Long those Island. you know ten to twelve uh, G League games, the competition is going to be fierce. It's going to be high level competition of you know twenty five, twenty six. Real guys that have experience at the pro level, but we're also, you know, big time uh, college superstars like uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, they had a two way player and uh, Frank Mason, who spent a lot of time um, mm. with, the, with the Wisconsin herd. And if Kansas, you yeah. follow college basketball in any way, you know his name because he was the May Smith College Player of the Year. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, you have other, other guys in the league that were, you know, on, you know, Big Ten. Um, all Big Ten teams, all SEC teams, ACC, um, you know, those kind of guys. And, you know, you have other players that, you know, have been around the block as professionals. So the competition is is going to be fierce uh, from a talent standpoint and also from a, the standpoint of those guys wanting to prove themselves, you know, in front of the large amount of scouts that are going to be watching these high school teams. Uh, kids compete so um uh the high school kids are definitely in for uh competition yeah i'm glad to hear that that competition is going to be good and it's what i would expect dakota this seems like it's going to be a different world a, a whole new world uh not just for college basketball but also obviously for the g league so i have to ask the g league king how much better <laughs> yeah i'm gonna use that nickname dakota i'm gonna <laughs> okay. use it all right i'm gonna use it man how much better does you know, a decision announcement like this help the G League in its standing, its visibility mm. um, as it's growing. Do you feel like this has a real impact on the league in itself? Definitely. Um, yesterday, I like uh, ESPN on in the background, and you know, every single hour they were talking about this, and they had the G League logo, and you know, on social media, everybody was talking about this because you know, besides the WNBA draft and uh, that's going on right now and the NFL draft that's going on uh, next week, there's nothing to talk about in terms of sports. <laughs> so uh, this is definitely, you know, um, you know, despite the awful circumstances of the coronavirus, this is, you know, a good opportunity, you know, for, for people to talk about the G League in particular, you know, because you have to with a player of, uh, you know, Jalen Green's, um, Talent. I think it's going to be it's going to stick into the season, especially if um, you know these high school um, uh, players, you know, get a um, significant opportunity to play against uh, Jalen Jalen Talent. Because you know the the people that come to watch, you know, Jalen Green. He has you know he hasn't played a single game outside of high school, and he already already has you know nine hundred thousand followers on IG. So. Uh, there's going to be more eyes on the G League than ever before. So, that's so, on, so on on that note, what do you think this does for the G League from the standpoint of you know a continuation period, right? Like, what if this continues to happen where you have top guys like in the future Imani Bates or somebody like that, where you have top guys from the high school circuit just go straight to the G League? What do you think that'll do for the league if we start to see this for a sustainable, I don't know, three to five year period? You know, what do you think that's going to do? Well, it's going to make it uh, more legitimate in the eyes of a lot more people. Um, you know, in the early days where I, when I was writing about the league, when I was known as the uh, D-League, um, <laughs> it was looked, the, the players in the league were, you know, looked at as 
trash. And, you know, I disagree with that, you know, at that point. But I I feel like, especially with the addition of these, you know, high-level guys that are going to be, a lot of these guys um, are going to be lottery picks uh, next year. Um, I think more people are going to respect uh, the G League as a whole and respect, you know, the competition level uh, within it. Yeah, no, I think I think that is. I think it's going to definitely be um, exciting times for this uh, here with the G League. Dakota, you are the G League king. We want to thank you. Thank you for giving us some time. I know you're very busy with everything that's going on, but we want to thank you for giving us some time to talk about this and obviously very exciting time for the league in itself. All right, man, be safe, okay? You too. New podcast alert. Life coaches Marguerite Pierce and Lindsay Jackson are bringing a rich blend of laughter, love, and wisdom to their podcast, Necessity. The pod seeks to reestablish the basic tenets of self-love, self-confidence, goal accomplishment, and the ability to love life on your own terms. Necessity is available on all major podcast platforms, so grab a cup and listen up as two coaches are on a mission to shift perspective one sip at a time. joining us for this part of the podcast we got our man good friend long time uh supporter of what we do my man jamal Definitely. womack he's the assistant Definitely. basketball coach at saint francis college in brooklyn new york uh jamal what's up man how you doing i'm doing great man i'm blessed to be healthy you know i'm happy that i got a roof over my head i got food every day Work. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough time for everybody out here but you know one one step at a time one day at a time and just praying that, you know, so many different people who are sick out there just get better. But I'm doing great. Yeah, how's man. the school How's the school dealing with it? You know, obviously that's our old stomping grounds and I went there. So, like, how's how's that been? Uh, leadership has been great. You know, just making sure that uh, all the kids have access to, um, you know, talk to their coaches about what they have to do for their schoolwork online. You know, they've been accessing Zoom a lot. You know, there's <clears> a <throat> weekly staff meeting on Zoom. A lot of teams have weekly meetings on Zoom. Uh, the president of our college has actually jumped in on a couple Zooms just to, you know, show that he supports everything that we're doing. And yeah. that means a lot. When you hear from the top, that means a lot. When you get the president to jump on a Zoom and just say, hey, guys, I know it's a tough time, but you have my my full support. You know, we fully back our staff. You know, you guys still have your jobs. Don't yeah. worry about that. So that that's very important. So, you know, I think the school has done a great job. That's great. That's good. That's good to hear out of um, St. Francis College. And the reason we want to talk to you, Jamal, because, you know, you – uh, one have been very deep into the college basketball world. Obviously, being assistant coach, you also played. You also played professionally overseas. So we wanted to talk to you coach about AAU everything. As coach well. AAU as well, too. Yeah, we can't yeah. note that. So you have many different um, ties into basketball. You and I have had many basketball conversations. Jalen with Jalen Green and the announcement coming that mm. he will not go to college and he mm-hmm. will play as part of this G League Select Development uh, situation that's going on with the NBA. What was your reaction to that as somebody who's had a huge part in basketball? Um, I was happy. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, champion of if you want to go straight to the NBA, you should be allowed to. You know, and, and I, I've always been like that. Uh, you know, it's a gamble like anything in life. You know, uh, if you believe that you have the skills to play in the, in, 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 in the top league and, and you have the people you trust telling you to make that jump, you should be allowed to make that jump. Uh you know, one of the misconceptions is that the NCAA is stopping kids from doing that. And it's, it's really not the NCAA. It's the players. It's the collective bargaining agreement. They are, the, they are the ones who don't allow you to leave high school and go straight to the NBA. You have to do one year. So as an NCAA coach, I think it's great. You get guys who really are ready for the next level. They can go to the next level. And you kind of can recruit, you know, the way you want to recruit. You know, you, you, can, you can build your team in a different way. You you obviously played professional basketball overseas. One of the things I always feel like I feel like I always have to argue with people is people undervalue how much it is just being a professional. And Jamal, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Playing yeah. the game in college is much different than being a professional. Waking up every day, playing with other grown men, you know, the practices, the the regimen, the routine, everything. Are you also happy to see these young men like Jalen Green and others that may follow get that opportunity? so that they can have that professional experience and maybe learn something a little bit different than they would at the collegiate level? Oh, yeah, def- definitely. If, you know, everyone's different, you know, and, and Jalen Green is taking a, a different route.
Select team is a case study. We're going to get to see how it works. How are players who are ranked top three in their class going to develop and be ready for their freshman year? I mean, excuse me, for their rookie year against someone who went to a high, um, a major college, a top five college. We'll see them go head to head. We'll see a Jalen Green, you know, go head to head against, you know, a Cole Anthony. You know, who 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 benefits the most? Which system works best? You know, and it's gonna it's gonna be great to see. It's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah. We've talked on recent episodes about, you know, any long-term effects these sort of things could potentially have, even before Jalen Green decided to make this jump, at least publicly. So I'm wondering, just, you know, on the college game, on the NCAA landscape, the NBA in general, like, what sort of long-term effects could this have if this becomes more of a trend where we start to see more Jalen Greens, maybe in Amani Bates down the line, mm -hmm. you know, these yeah, these kids start going this route. Like, what, what could this potentially mean from all angles? Well, uh, I, I truly believe college basketball is going to be is, uh, is going to be safe in terms of the fan base, in terms of the players. You know, if you take the top five players from next year's class and you don't send them to college, the schools are still going to have their pick at the next 75. I mean, excuse me, the, se the next 95 players on the top 100 list. Yeah. You know, and if you look at fan bases in college, <laughs> it's not really player oriented. It's school oriented. It's alumni bases. There are the coaches, you know, the foundation of the players that came through there. It's not like the Knicks. When, 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 when guys go see the Knicks now, they don't say, oh, I'm going to see him because we had Walt Clark Frazier in the 70s. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I'm a Knicks fan. Like, you know, like, nobody says that, you know? Nobody, nobody talks about, oh, I believe the Knicks are going to win this year because of John Stark's dunk. No, but <laughs> if you talk about Duke, you talk about Christian Leitner. You know, right. you talk about Jason Williams, you talk about Coach K, you yeah. talk about the foundations and the alumni bases and the families and the brotherhoods of those programs. So I think college basketball is going to be safe. But I, however, I do think you're going to start to see a lot more competition in terms of agents. Mm. And agents trying to talk to some of these kids and showing them, hey, you can make the money. And now it's going to become a little interesting to see how many more agents come out the loop to try and get these players. And how early do they start? You know, we just saw... You know, college basketball had a, a problem with agents. Will the G League have a problem with agents? When are agents going to start talking to kids when they're in 10th grade to tell them that you can go to the G League Select? Yeah. It's going to it's gonna be Pandora's box out there. Yeah, yeah. and now, and, now I, and I'm a proponent of this, obviously, of Jalen Green being able to make the decision. Dexter, you are as well. And Jamal, you said the same. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering, like, you know, what do you think this affects how maybe he turns out as a pro? Like, do you think, how does you think he benefits from this in what way, just from the standpoint of, you know, personal development, on court, off court, all that stuff? Because he's not going to go through the one and done college experience that he would have at, you know, Kentucky or Arizona or Duke or whatever it is. He's just going straight to the G League program. Well, just to, not, not to, uh, to revamp the question, but to understand it, you have to understand Jalen Green is going into a specific program. He's yeah. not just going to the G League. And that's what a lot of people are confused at. Like, this is not going to be available. They selected him. He didn't select the G League. They told him, we want you to be on our select team. So now, I don't want a lot of kids to start to think next year, oh, 15 kids are going to go to the G League and make $800,000. No, there's, mm. only, there's only two spots. <laughs> it's not spots for everyone. Uh, for Green, it's as a pro, he's going to not have to worry about, you know, classes. He's going to not have to worry about... Uh, food or, you know, anything like that, which a lot of players don't worry about either. He's going to have to focus on, it's a job for him now. So he's getting an internship. A lot of kids get internships at 16, 17, 18, and we say it's beneficial for their life, right? If yeah. you work at, if you work at JP Morgan or you go work at Deutsche Bank, you know, it's great for your life if you have those internships. Why is it not great for your life at 18 to go do an internship if you're ready to play basketball and get paid for it? Nah, right. yeah. absolutely. So that's what he's doing. He's doing an inter a paid internship where he gets to be around pros, he gets to train like a pro, and he prepares himself for the next level. Um, the one thing that it doesn't give him is marketing value. You're going to have a higher marketing value if you're at a Duke, if you're at a Kentucky, if you're at a Texas, if you're at a Power 5 school who's on ESPN primetime, you know, 20 to 25 times a week. If you're in an NCAA tournament, which is one of the biggest marketing events in the world, you know, besides World Cup and, and the Super Bowl and the NBA Finals and stuff like that, your market value, I think, is higher when you're at these colleges because you have a base, you have a foundation that's already set. So it's like if Zion Williamson went to the G League 
or if Zion Williamson went to Duke, which which one would have given more a higher market value? That's what you kind of kind of think of. It's yeah. really it's it, with that said, Jamal. It's going to be really interesting to me to see how the NBA tries to market the people who are part of this select team, mm-hmm. right? Will they if if a kid's really killing? It, let's say Jalen Green is, and people want to watch these games. Will they put him out there, or will they not want to? because they might not want to expose them against a certain level of players. How do you think that will go? Because marketing is very interesting, and that's a really great point, I think, that you make. How do you think that'll work out? It depends on the schedule. That's the curious thing. That's what we. That's why I said it's like a case study. We're all wondering, how many games is he going to play? You know, if you go to North Carolina, you go to, you know, Big E School, St. John's, you got to play the 30 games against whoever comes out there. You know, is, is Jalen going to play every team? You know, is he going to play the top players? He got to play some grown men, some 27, 26 journeymen who have been in Yugoslavia. You know, it's not Yugoslavia. Yeah, they ain't trying to lose you know, to a know, number. They ain't trying to lose to a teenager. Yeah, these guys are. <laughs> these guys have been playing their whole lives, you know, and and they're they're ready, you know. So, is that going to bring his value down? You know, I I think the kid. I think he's going to do good. You know, I, I'm rooting for him, but I just got to be honest and tell you that it's a different level. These are professional athletes every day in a day. This is no longer high schoolers where you're playing against a freshman or a sophomore who's 15 years old. Right. These are grown men who've been through the trials and tribulations of being a pro athlete. Some of them holding on by thread to their last <clears throat> pro- professional hope. They're going to be hungry. Yeah, These, and if you look at the guys that played in the G League in recent years, you're looking at, I mean, I'm looking at some names here. Quincy AC, that's a grown man right there. Right. You know what I mean? Shake Milton, we saw what he did when the Sixers eventually called him up and signed him. Stanley Johnson, former first-round pick. Denzel Valentine played a G League game last year. Like, yeah, you have some guys who are not, they're not going to want to be upstaged by a teenager. You turn around, you got to go against, you play Westchester Knicks, you're going against Lonzo Trigg. He, you remember when he got used to play. Right. Like, yeah. Lonzo Trigg can give you 50 at that yeah. level. Like, seriously, right. somebody can give you 50 at that level. So I think that's why they put that money out there, because that's the gamble. You're taking a gamble on your your stock, but now you're benefiting from having money. So if your stock slides in the draft, at least you've made seven to 800000 you know, in the year you play in the G League. Well, I've been talking about how this is a different world, um, Jamal, and you seem like somebody who's in the college game that's very positive about this. But of other people you've talked to around college basketball, have they been as positive about this? Because I think the, the concern mm-hmm. is like, oh, you know, things are going to change for college basketball, which it will. It's a different world. Mm-hmm. But you don't seem to be concerned. You're very positive about this. And I, I tend to like that attitude. But what, what have you heard from other people? I've talked to some coaches who... who you know, they think it's going to become the wild, wild west. You know, you're going to get a, a, a lot of a lot of agents just really trying to, you know, get these kids at, you know, younger ages to not to kind of program them to say, hey, you don't need to go to school. But, you know, that's why I, I said you're going to have to see some of these guys go through it. Like for every Kobe Bryant, there's 10 Lenny Cooks. Right. You know, you know, right. for every, you know, for every Kevin Garnett, there's a, a you know, there's a bunch of players that we never even heard of. You know, that that you can go with the list. You just Google players who went tried to go straight to the NBA and didn't have great careers, and you'll see it. You know, you got Brandon Jennings, who I think is a phenomenal player. Yeah, I remember seeing got, him in high school. You've got Stephen Curry, mm-hmm. you know, guys who came out the same, you know, same time. Steph, um, Brandon Jennings went straight to Italy, you know. And LaMelo did a great job this year, NBL. That was a great league. I thought that league is amazing. It's a tough league. And now he helped him his stock. So it's going to be a case study, but... I'm very positive because I just think college basketball is for the fans and it gives it something that professional basketball doesn't. And so the fan base will still be there. Now on the AAU side of things, and Mm. I know you've been around the game and you see it too in recruiting, and Jamal, you and I have spoken about this. You talked about the agents coming to the kids. And my concern, the one concern I'll say I'll say with that is you've seen this before too. Kids get a lot of bad information, even in terms sometimes when it comes to choosing schools. We've seen that. Um, how, How much are... Is it going to rely on good people around these kids, whether it's parents, mentors, people like that, to help them make the right decisions? Because there's so much money on the line now. Well, I think it goes to, you know, the, the program I was a part of, PSA Cardinals, when I was coaching. Uh, you got to trust the people who run your program, you know, because that's who your kids are going to be around for the entire summer. You know, that's who you got to trust those people that they're not going to sell your kids out. They're not trying to make a buck. That's where you got to really do your homework at. You can't just be letting them go play with anybody on any different weekend, not knowing who they're going to be around. Uh, a lot of parents are going to really have to watch and really have to make sound decisions because this is a roll of the dice. 
You know, you 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 play for one year G League, you break your ankle. I mean, anything could happen. You know, just like in college, it could happen. You still might not have an opportunity. You can't go back to that. You could go back to school if you break your ankle. You know, you could rehab and then have a sophomore season, have a junior season, maybe peak in your in your senior season. You know, Obi, who knew who Obi Toppin was before this year? <laughs> who right. knew who he was? I, right. I mean, I did, but I know you what you're trying know. to say. But the yeah, average yeah. person, the average the, basketball fan, the average fan person didn't. had nah. no idea. They were not watching Date in the Atlantic Ten. None of it. <laughs> At the end of the year, they said, and he know, could have been a first round pick last year, just late first round, but still, and people didn't know who he was. Some people need to develop, and that's what college is showing. Everyone is not, it's not going to be Jalen. Everyone is not going to be Lamelo. You know, it's going to be 10, 20, 30 more guys who need to be coached, who need to be in the gym, who need to, you know, play through some games, who need to, you know, not do good their first year, but not be given up on. You know, if a guy does bad in the G League, he they may give up on him. Yeah. It's not in the contract anymore. So what do you think does happen if, I mean, maybe, all right, he's not going to play against every team because of the nature of this deal and mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. But what if he plays a handful of games and, you know, 41% from the field, he's averaging like 14, a few rebounds, and he's not really playing to the level at which we thought. And then in the draft, instead of going number one, maybe he goes eighth. And, you know, what, what does that sort of do for the next group after that? Uh, they'll, the next group will really watch carefully and see if that's the gamble they want to make. You know, uh, if he drops, if he stays a lot of, I mean, he's projected top three. That's yeah. what they've got him projected as. Yeah. I mean, even if he went to college, he could have went from top three to, to top 15. So I don't think that's really a stretch. You know, that could happen. Look at Cole Anthony's a great player. He was number one coming out of high school next year. Projected top three, excuse me, too. James Wiseman, Cole Anthony, you know, uh, that you can argue which one. You know, you got the, the shooter from Georgia. Anthony you know, you Edwards. Anthony yeah. Edwards. Yep. Yeah, you got any one of those three, depending on who had the number one pick. Now Cole is, is looking at more like, you know, seven, eight, nine. Which That's is still what amazing. I'm saying, right. It's yeah, still amazing. Yeah. It's still amazing, but that's where he's... So it can go either way. You know, college, yeah. you can drop as well. You know, so... But I think kids will look at it and say, you know what? Maybe it's a little safer going to the known than the unknown. But do you think it's more... Do you think it'll be held against him more if he were to sort of struggle in G League as opposed to struggling in college, even though you would probably argue it should be the other way, right? Because you're not playing against grown men, you're playing against kids. But the perception of the G League is that it's this minor league and this, this, and that, when people need to realize that these are some it's of the good. best players in the world also. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think it's going to, if he struggles basketball-wise, people are going to kill him. They will say something if his stock, if his draft goes down and his marketing ability goes down. If he has a tough mm. year, and he doesn't come out with endorsements or he drops out of the, the lottery or something mm -hmm. like that, then people are going to say, whoa, I don't know if this is a good move. They're not The numbers, they're not going to really kill about, you know? They're not going to be the same thing. Uh, Brandon Jennings would average seven in, in, in Italy this first year. Yeah, no, it was something like that, number. and his percentage yeah. wasn't great either, yeah. yeah. You no, know, LaMelo played well, but he played, like, what, 15 games, 14 games? And know? he got hurt. 14 he? games. I mean, he got hurt. I don't yeah. know. How, and his three-point shooting didn't look that great, but... <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He pulled the plug kind of easy, but I think he did enough. You know, but he's smart. He did enough to show that he's a top five pick. And I was right. like, I, would, yeah. I, wouldn't play, I wouldn't play anymore either. Why Word. Are you, Word. What are you showing? What's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the sense of it? As Word. a Nick fan, is that who you want? Listen, as a Nick fan, listen, man. Listen. <laughs> listen. Yo, preach, Jamal. Listen. Preach, man. Preach. Because, you know, we, we, we'll fan, take any I, help. Listen, I don't. It, it's a strange draft. I think y'all should get LaMelo. That's what I, I think. I, I take Lamelo. I think Lamelo is good. I enough. see some people want Killian Haynes now from France. Killian Haynes, but I, I'm I'm gonna be honest, man. Frank Nilakina, <laughs> you're a little scarred. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know about two both of them. Like like that's like <laughs> we went to Frederick Weiss's brother the year after Frederick Weiss didn't come over. Like I don't I don't know, man. Like I like it. I like Nika, um, Frank Nicolina, but I'm just saying I, I don't. Know. I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know. I, I'd I'm, rather take an Anthony Edwards or Lamelo. Like, let it. I think Anthony be. Edwards would be good. Anthony Edwards would be good. Fit. I like him. I he like can play him. with RJ two and the three right there. Yeah. So I mean, uh, the Knicks. We need. We need help, man. We need a lot of help, man. It's been a. It's been a tough couple of seasons. You're but damn, you're damn right about that. The tough couple of decades. <laughs> One thing I can say, man. You know, no teams as of right now to the NBA comes out. No teams did not. No teams were eliminated from the playoffs. So. Mm. 
you know, we weren't eliminated from the playoffs <laughs> during this season. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> way to find the silver lining. <laughs> you got to, man. You got to. You got to. to. These days, you absolutely have to. You got to, man. Yo, Jamal, man, thank you. We appreciate your time uh, talking you, on this God. matter. Yeah. We've been trying to get you on here for a while, so we got to bring yeah. you back some more as we get closer to some basketball and college basketball and everything. Nah, definitely, sure. definitely. Thanks, thanks, guys, for having me, man. Keep doing good work, man. I look forward to seeing more work from you guys. You guys are doing an amazing job, man. Nah, man, we appreciate thanks, you. Bro. All right, that's it for episode one twenty two. Hold on, Brian. Yeah, Brian, go. Go, put, go put a shirt on because that. <laughs> that <laughs> was hot in here, man. I'm oh, telling you, it's not that hot. I tried. Look, looking like it's a Puerto Rican summer up in there. For real? Where you? Are you shooting from Puerto Rico? Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> I might as well be she. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, man. Y'all got to be good, he's, man. He's Justin Queens. All right, that's it for episode 122 of right. the Hotel Podcast. Uh, thanks to our guests for this portion, Jamal Womack. Until next time, y'all. Peace.